Streamlabs OBS is finding new and creative ways of pissing me off. So, I've already set up everything that I needed to set up for my stream, and now there's a whole new option window that pops up whenever I select to go start a stream. But I don't know what it's doing, but whatever. Anyway, you're going to have to bear with me also. I'm still fighting this head, to, head cold. So, for those who are not familiar with my Simple Multiplayer Steam template, um, created it a couple years ago, and about, about two years ago, and I pretty much use it all the frickin' time. Anytime I'm creating a new project, I just start with a cloned version of my current version. And with that, I just build upon that because it's already got a, a simple menu system and everything built into it. And um, let's run it in standalone game mode just so you can see what it is. Now, the main reason why I created it is I needed something that I could use on a regular basis for creating all these temporary projects so that I would have a multiplayer system in place to test with friends. And this is what I created. And you can see it's got Steam info. This is my Steam username and avatar. It automatically finds those and shows those in the upper right hand corner for, you know, if you launch it, it's going to show your Steam information. So you have to have Steam running in the background and it uses a Steam developer app ID, which is universal. And whenever you're playing anything that you've created with this template, it's going to show up in Steam that you're playing Space War. And that's just the title given to the app ID. So if you want, you can actually go to single player and as you're making your maps and stuff like that and testing things out, you can run around and, okay, you're playing with your, I mean, by yourself in single player mode. You can hit the escape key, which is my preference. Um, you can change that. It's easy to change, but you can resume game and keep playing or you can go back to the main menu. Right now, you just have single player, multiplayer, and when you go to multiplayer, this pops up, and you can use this to actually find a lobby that somebody else has already created. So you click on Find Lobby. It's a very simple system. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. See, somebody else has already got a game going that's using the same basic architecture. Although, I'm not going to be able to join their game because they're not playing the same thing as mine. So you'll see that from time to time, and you'll see the ping show up as, well, this stupid high number. That's because it is still on a, a Steam app ID, and it's just going to report back a false uh, ping. Don't worry about that. But whoever created theirs, they didn't give a name to it, so there's nothing showing up here. Or you can click host and uh, call it whatever you want, and hit the make button. Now this is actually multiplayer. I am now broadcasting this, so anybody who has this same version of what I'm playing right now will be able to join in, and you'll be able to see each other and play around. Very simple, very easy to use, and again, you hit the escape key, resume, or main menu. Like I, said, I use this on a lot of projects, and of course you got exit game. But I want a little bit more going on here. Um, some things that I'm going to need to add in like uh, when you go to single player, instead of it going directly into a single player game, uh, what about going to another menu option here, like checking to see if you've got a save game in place and allowing you to continue playing or create a new save game. So that's an option that I want. Um, I'd like to have other options put inside here and they'll just go right here below that one. But the biggest and most important thing that you can use is Notepad. Create an ideas uh, Notepad uh, document and like, okay, I want uh, save game for single and multiplayer. Um, so that's something that I need to add in. Uh, settings tab with, well, I don't know, a video resolution. Um, and other options tab. So you just go in there and just create uh, a notepad and just throw down exactly what you need and what your project is going to need. And 
it, once you do it, save it, refer back to it. You know, me having three monitors, it's, it's easy for me to just grab this and throw this on another monitor and not worry about it. I can still see it. So as I'm going through, what else did I need? Oh yeah, I need this. And you can go through your list and save it, add to it, go back to it whenever you need to. But that's going to be your little scratch pad. I used to have a notepad that I kept, an actual notebook that I kept on my desk. And I write things down and, well, it always, you know, get lost or whatever else. So The UI itself. And I'm going to try to keep this video, I, I, whenever I'm doing these spitball videos, I, I try to keep them no more than an hour. So, go into my main menu which is just a widget and this is pretty much it right here you've got this this main section here and you got your steam information up here um, this text right here never shows up it automatically gets changed it's part of another widget that's added in directly into here but as you can see these are the the items here now you can actually opt to hide these two because they're, they're not always visible um, so the next options that I add in here, like settings, or if I select um, single player, I can have it push these guys down and actually show what's underneath there. I'm actually not going to go into the, the heavy implementation of a secondary menu of, of checking to see what well, you're going to check anyway whenever you go into single player to see if there is a save game already. Um, I'll complicate things later by adding a menu in, but at first, whenever I go into single player, I want this to be a persistent thing, so I'll just go ahead and set it up to where when I go into that first map, it's going to check to see if there's a save game and it'll automatically load that save game if it is not there. Well, if it is there, if it is not there, then what it'll end up doing is it will then save a new save game slot. And we'll just use a generic name for that. Um, so I'm not going to add anything directly into the menu just yet. I'm just going to do automatic. So what it's set up to do is go into the lobby map. So this is the initial okay now I'm in the lobby so the first step I'm actually going to do is since single player and multiplayer is going to be slightly different we can go in here and I'm going to change this text right there and go to my details I'm going to change that to say single play, player map Okay, yeah, it doesn't have to be anything spectacular. I mean, I could change the the font around, make it larger, change the color, whatever. But next thing I'm gonna do is just so we can have a visible refer representation that hey, we are now in the single player map. So I'll just do file, save current as, and that's gonna let me save another version of this same map. And we'll call this single map. I'm already in my maps folder. So now this is my single player map. And if I were to hit play from selected viewport, there we go. Oh no, lighting needs to be rebuilt. Oh, that's terrible. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of lighting influence in this map. So this is just straight up my single player map. And I can do basically the same thing. And let's go ahead and just do a quick build. It won't take but a couple seconds. Um, and instead of having a lobby map, I'm going to keep the lobby map. Oh my god, you suck so much ass. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Gee, are you just about done yet? What I'll do is I'll go back and I'll change the text again, and I'll save it as multi-map. So that I have separate maps for everything, but I'm not going to get rid of my lobby map because at some point I'm going to use that as a transitional thing to where the lobby map is for multiplayer and be the actual multiplayer lobby 
but for right now I can leave it the way it is and it should be fine so now whenever I go to play single player I need it to go here so the first thing I'm going to do is click on that and I can click on it again control C and then I'll go into my widgets from my main menu go into my graph nope and go to single player so when I hit the single player button essentially what it's doing is on click open level and we're just gonna control V so now that's in there when we're changing it later if you want to add more maps in you can actually create a variable and call it map name and just plug that into here and then as you're creating your your which map are we gonna play oh let's play the four square map or let's play the the cowboy town or whatever and you can actually select from a drop down list or whatever kind of list you want and be able to create a way of choosing your map so um, so that's all I need to do for right here compile save and let's close that when launching I always go to main menu map now if I play in standalone game I go to single player and now we can see single player map but if we hit escape go back to the main menu multiplayer host make it just says text so we're in different maps now all right next thing is actually having the save game component and I could put this anywhere but I think I'm gonna put it in my UI folder uh, let's see here it's not a widget let's go into well let's just create a new folder for it and we'll call this save game and I'm gonna go ahead and change the map back over to single map just over there save game we need a new blueprint all classes save game and select and um, default underscore SG I guess that's fine for a default save game and we open that up what we're gonna need to do is know what we need to save in the save game um, what kind of information do we need to store that kind of stuff and we're gonna need those variables so what I'll do also is bring up my character character blueprints alright nothing special in here my player stats you got my character which eh, we don't need to mess with those players to head so all we have is health um, nothing else in components so this is really and truly the only stat that we have to work with um, let's go ahead and hit save on that there's nothing really to compile yet but um, so I'm just gonna put in a variable now the variable name you need to know that it's actually gonna be a save game variable because you're gonna be calling this save game information back and forth so let's call this A fly in my room uh, SG health and we know that that's gonna be a float so compile and save SG health all right so we're just getting the, the basic setup in here right now our save game our health we're gonna need a way of testing it here soon anyway um, we're gonna need to create a function that is going to run on startup and we can inject it in here just to make a custom event um, probably a custom event instead of just a straight function and it'll just need to be inside here because yeah, normally on startup what we're doing here get our player controller get our player HUD add it to our viewport set our input mode to game only and hide the mouse cursor is essentially all we're doing there 
and we can just add to that with another custom event that we'll create down here somewhere wherever we got some clear space and we'll just do custom event save or let's say uh, save game check all right with save game check we can now call that up inside there so let's go ahead and compile and save and then as we add things to it then um, it'll just automatically run so we just drag off from here save game check so now when we load up it's just gonna automatically run whatever we put in right here on this guy now you can do this as a function as well um, I've done both ways I didn't see I go both ways I said I have done it both ways doesn't really sound much better but anyway we're, <laughs> we're gonna crack on with this um, what do we need to do we need to check to see if the save game exists um, you know learning a lot of stuff you can do a lot of YouTube searches and and so forth but if you look uh, see save just type in save game um, and you know the stuff is right there in front of you uh, does save game exist okay well we need to check to see if there's a save game what do we call ours default underscore SG so does save game exist we need a string value here and I'm just gonna put in the same name default SG does save game exist so with that we have to ask that question we need to know if that save game exists and if not then we need to create one so question this and this is how we're gonna split out our answer does save game exist true then we need to well just start typing it in again create save game object or in this case since we're off true load game from slot all right and we can put in same thing can probably just go ahead and copy and paste that but whatever load game from slot okay so we're gonna load that information in and we're gonna have more stuff there everything you put variable wise into your save game object is information you need to save every time you save that game and whenever you do that you're going to need to, to know to call that information back up and retrieve that information so you're loading game from slot we'll come back over here and if we're off of false then same basic thing just start typing it in and you can see save game to slot and we'll just give us some room to work with save game object while well, we don't have anything yet so mm, okay so we're just asking does it exist if not then go ahead and create it if it does then go ahead and load it compile and save everything one thing I do need to have is if we're playing this let's run the selective viewport just so we can test things out Hello. Oh, I'm Religion 4. Why are you messing with me? Seriously? <laughs> oh, Unreal Engine. Nah, uh, don't restore. You are the master of your own saves.
All right, so we were in a player. All right, because I compile and save after I do anything, I didn't lose anything there. All right, so as I was saying about that, we need a way of testing to see if we're actually going to save that data. We're not done making the scripting for it yet, but we just need a testing method to know that well, it's saving that information. And we're going to have to add some functionality into our escape menu so that when we go back to the main menu, we want to automatically save. So having it set up in the player like that as a separate custom event, we can now call that information back up whenever we need to. So just proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And I'm not planning anything. I'm just making this crap up as I go along. And with a head cold, it makes it even better, right? So assets. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called gadgets. Inside here, new blueprint, actor, pain pad, and all this is going to do is be something that we can inflict pain upon ourselves with. So we can, we only have one variable saved in this um, our player right now. It's just health only. Uh, so we need something to to reduce its health. I could have just done a key binding and say, okay, I can do that. But it's easier to go ahead and just create this because I can use it when I want to or don't use it. So I'm just going to add a component and it's going to be a cube and I'm going to change the height to point 0.1 that's fine, I can stay on the ground, I don't care and then I'm going to add another component of a box collision and that box collision I just want to resize that So now whenever we step into this little box here, all we want to do is just reduce our health. So that's going to be good enough. And compost, save. We don't need any of you. Compost, save. Box collision, on component begin overlap, off of add event. And from other actor cast to player underscore base, which is our player character. And we want to get health. And we're going to want to set health. So every time we step on this, we want to reduce our health by float, negative float. 10. That's going to be just fine. So we're, we don't even have a death sequence or anything else set up in here. We don't have animations for death. We don't have a death condition. So that's something that's going to have to be added in later. Um, so all we're doing now with this is just we step on that. And let's just for the grins play sound at location. I've only got one sound, and it's that. And location, screw it, we'll just grab our box. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's not really going to matter in a single player environment on the, um, the location because you're the only person who's going to hear it. But when you start doing things in multiplayer, you want to have sound attenuations applied to your your sounds, so that if it's... And one of the, the pet peeves that I have was a, um, a kind of a popular... I won't mention the exact parameters of it, but it was a, a survival thing. And when you chose to a eat something, there was no sound attenuation to it. So you're in a multiplayer environment on the... Uh, five miles from somebody else and they pick up an apple and start eating it, you can hear them playing the sound of them eating the apple. Annoying as hell. 
All right, so compile, save. So now if we go in here and play. Wow, you suck donkey nuts. You know, if this is going to be a continuing problem, then I'm just going to end the video and try it again later. Um, I'd kind of like it if frickin' Unreal Engine 4 would stop crashing. Single map, assets, gadgets. Throw that in there, and let's hit play. <sighs> Kiss my ass, Unreal Engine. Okay, to make sure that it's nothing to do with our partially finished or partially unfinished, uh, save game system, I'm just going to break that line right there. So it's going to try to run the custom event. There's nothing there for it to run, so whatever. Um, maps. Single map. Gadgets. Save all. Let's go ahead and save it all now so that at least it's there. Wow, you didn't crash. So we come in here and you can see it reduced my health and played the sound. So now we have a way of, of changing our health. See, there's no death condition, so we don't know that, you know, we've died at that point. All right, where were we? Look at our character. All right, so what we're doing here is we're checking to see if it exists. Um, let's actually change the name of it. Let's just call it save, default save. Now, another way that we could do that is this is asking for a string, so we could create another variable and save game name, change that to a string, and let's go ahead and reconnect to you, see if you were what was causing this thing to crash. Now we can just plug this into it, and we don't have to remember what it was called. Um, because this save game, let's compile and save. We save the data there, default save, compile, save. Now, anytime we need to, we can just plug it in there. And I could have just drugged this down to there, but it doesn't matter. Um, so now we actually have that saved as a variable. All right, so save game check. We're going to load game from slot. And what we need to get is the variables from there. And in our save game, Our default save game. We've got that default or, or SG health. It is not set. It is set to zero. But our default for our player is. Let's go ahead and put this under components. Or let's let's give it an actual category name. Um, let's call this save game. So now. We can hide that when we don't need to see it. Go to save game name and let's just type in. We need to be able to get that information from there. Save game. Load game from slot, 
and create save game object. You know, I've never used the async, but so we're creating a save game object and save game default SG. Okay, yeah. Um, no, we're creating this. So, when you don't know what you're doing, you make shit up. Save game. Um, load game from slot. And what we actually need is to... load load stream level now create save game object and we're, we're actually saving the game to slot creating the save game object and we still need to be able to call the information from there which is our health we need to set our health. Now you can see this is SG health. This is the health from our default save game. Come on, save. And then we need to be able to grab our player stat health. And we need to get that and set that. Now, the thing about a save game is when you're setting up your save game in your actual project yourself, when do you need it to load? Yeah, and UE4, just... The more crap they add to it, it seems like they forget to keep the thing stable for some reason. And it just gets unstable over time. Things that used to work just fine break and no longer work because, oh, they forgot to add something in, but yeah, it's just weird. Alright, so we're saving save game to slot. We're creating the actual save game. Um... Got our save game name. Uh, we haven't created a save game object yet, but the save game class default SG. We're able to pull from our return value to get um, to set our save game health to our player health. We know that this is just our player health because it's named health. Reason why I chose SG and the name for our save game health is so that we could see that it it belongs to the save game. But um, what I was saying there is when you, you have a save game system in place, you need to keep in mind where do you want to save it? How do you want your player's information to be saved? Do you want it to be saved whenever they exit the map? When they complete a checkpoint? Every minute? Every 30 seconds? every five seconds, every second, how often do you need it to save that data to the save game slot? Just in case, God forbid, you know, the game crashes. Uh, how much information is lost? How much time has it been since they saved? So you have to kind of play through that in your mind. Where do you want the save game to actually go? If you're doing a, a racing game, um, think of a checkpoint as you're going around the track if you just have a start finish line only what will happen is like say this is your start finish line your player goes through the start finish line what's to prevent them from looping back around and just going right through and completing all their laps by driving in a tight circle around there like that so you actually have to put checkpoints all around your your map to make sure that they have completed those checkpoints but to have completion on checkpoint two, did the player complete checkpoint one? So you've got a lot of other stuff to take into consideration on on things like that. But again, just think about where you want your save game to actually go. 
and when you want it to save this information. So right now, all we have is just that. And all we're telling it to do is retrieve that information. Um, so when we first start off, it's checking, do we have the save game? If not, then save the game to a slot. And we're going to call it whatever. You know, this is our save game name right here, which is default save. So it's going to create a save game slot called default slave, and you'll it'll actually create an external file for that. And what is it saving? Well, all of our player stats, which in this case is just health. So um, let's see if it crashes again. Absolutely. Unreal Engine 4 can kiss my fat white ass. <sighs> Unhandled exception core UO or core U object. Kiss my ass. If I just go right into my single player map. Um, let's actually go back to my player. Because we're running this on this custom event and it is running to my startup. Um, right there. Save game check. Is checking to see if the save game exists. I'm going to break this again. And hit play. Working just fine. But what we want to do is actually, for my consideration of what we're doing right here, what I want to do is have it to where whenever I hit escape, it's going to bring up the menu and, and ask, do we want to resume game or um, do we want to go back to the main menu? Optimally, I want it to automatically save at that point, but you could manually add another button in and say, I want to save game. Um, you could also add in a key binding, and whenever you hit that key binding like F4, it automatically saves, throws a little thing up on your screen that says game saved, and that goes away. So when I add this in here is when everything breaks. Yep. So it does not like what I'm doing for my save game information. So what I'll do is I'll come back to this. Um, I'm not going to sit here and keep fighting um, the thing breaking. Don't restore. Go to here. And I'm just going to do this and this. And what I'll do is I'm going to take a break for a little bit. This is, this is aggravating the living crap out of me, the fact that it keeps crashing. And I will write up a whole new section right here. We're going to leave that in here. Um, but what we're going to do is just um, print text and game saved. So we just have something in there for it to run. I don't know if it's something with the way that I was putting the stuff down and see it pops up there on top left. Can't, couldn't see it because it says, you know, shift F1, whatever. But it did at least say that right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through and make sure that I'm, I'm doing it correctly. I'm pretty sure I thought that I was. But I'll, I'll come back and I'll do another video here shortly. 
Um, said normally I do my videos at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's 20 minutes till 8. So I'll go back through, and I will confirm that there's nothing that's majorly changed, and I will look through some of my other... Uh, I've added save games before, and I'll just go through one of my other projects and look to see what I did on that one, compare notes, and then I'll just come back in and I'll comment it off. I'll put it in a whole new block right, right over here and then recreate it showing step by step what it is and and why it works and how it works. But um, yeah. So I'm going to take a break for a little bit. I'll come back. I'll do another stream here. I'll say probably about 30 minutes or so and uh, hopefully we won't keep crashing every freaking time I try to load the freaking thing. Alright, thanks for watching, and we'll see you here in a little bit.